Hello and welcome to this tutorial. This is an introduction to virtual private networks, often just referred to as a VPN. Now this is the first of three tutorials we have on VPNs and here we're going to discuss the features and characteristics that you should be familiar with when you think about a VPN. Okay, so let's get started with a question. How do you securely connect remote users? Whether those remote users are in an office all the way around the world, or if they're mobile, let's say a traveling salesperson traveling around the world. I'm asking because data is at risk when it traverses unsecured shared networks like the internet. In other words, anybody on there could potentially intercept your data. And if, if, if it's sensitive information, you don't want that to happen. Now a couple solutions might come to mind and oftentimes people think about point-to-point uh, -point circuits, a dedicated connection that will solve the problem. Well in some instances that might work but in others it won't work at all. Think about this scenario, New York and Tokyo. These are locations of the same company. If we wanted to provision a point-to-point -point circuit between them we, we could possibly do that however the cost of that circuit is going to be extremely ex expensive probably to the point where it just would not make sense to do that. It's a bad business decision, so nobody's going to want to pay for that. Also, if you think about our traveling salesperson, how would you provide point-to-point -point circuits for that person? Let's say they're in a different city every week. It just wouldn't be practical to provision circuits to all the cities you think they're going to go to. What if they go to a new city they've never been to and you don't have a circuit there? just doesn't make sense. It's not a good fit, okay? So usually it's either an expense or it's just impractical to, to use point-to-point -point circuits. Well, these are interesting challenges and luckily VPNs provide really good solutions to these challenges and in doing so, they actually can save us a lot of money. Okay, well, if a VPN is the right way to go to secure data transmissions over unsecured shared networks, well then, what exactly does a VPN provide to do that? How does it do it? Well, we can answer that question in three ways. The first thing a VPN offers is confidentiality. So when we use a VPN, we ensure that the data cannot be read by unauthorized parties. So if we have a VPN between New York and Tokyo and somebody in the middle is able to intercept some of that data, they're not going to be able to read it. They're not going to be able to make any sense of it. It'll just be meaningless data to them. Okay, so our data is protected at that level. The second thing we get is authentication. And that simply means that we're able to confirm that the sender of the data is legitimate and not some imposter. So when New York receives packets from Tokyo over the VPN, New York has the ability to authenticate that data to make sure that it did originate from Tokyo and not from somebody else who's trying to send us maybe some bad information. Okay, so that's authentication. The last thing we get is data integrity. In other words, a VPN will ensure that the data hasn't been tampered with while it's in transit. So even if somebody does steal some of our data while it's traversing the internet, that they can't mess with that data and put it back into the stream and so that when New York gets it, we're getting some incorrect data. Okay? So if you think about it, it's a pretty complete approach. Confidentiality, that nobody else can read our data. We're able to authenticate who it comes from. And then finally, we're able to detect if somebody's actually messed with that data while it was in transit. Okay? So that's a pretty good, pretty good approach the VPNs take. Okay, now let's talk about the scenarios in which we would actually deploy a VPN. And there are three of them I want you to be familiar with. And this is the first one. It's called an intranet. And all that simply means is we're going to connect locations of the same company together. So if New York and Tokyo belong to the same bank, we could create an intranet between them in order to securely transfer data and access uh, resources at each location. And we can have many of these. If this bank is global and they're in London as well, Rio 2, we can create VPNs from each of those locations back to New York, let's say if that were the headquarters. Okay, so internet, the same company, just different locations. Now the second scenario is what you would call an extranet. So instead of connecting locations of the same company, here, with an extranet, we're going to create a VPN between two different companies. 
So let's say company A hired this contractor to provide some maintenance to their databases and that contractor needs secured remote access to that company. We would create a VPN for that contractor and we would refer to this as an extranet. And just like before, if we had many contractors, we could create a VPN and extranet for each one of those. And our third scenario is often referred to as remote access or just access. Here we're talking about a single user connecting back to a location. So we have company A, the headquarters, and we have a remote user. That person goes home at night and still has some work to do or an emergency comes up and they need to access something at the company headquarters. So at home, using their desktop, they establish a VPN back to the company. This is often used for mobile users as well, where you have traveling people and they're on laptops and they will use a VPN no matter where they are to connect back to the company. Okay, so depending on the scenario, we can deploy a certain type of VPN. We can also use different types of equipment to build our VPNs. So for instance, at company A, the headquarters, this could be a router, which could be used to configure the VPN. We can also do it on a firewall. So if you have a PIX lying around or the newer ASAs, those can also be used. There's also something called a VPN concentrator, and that's just a dedicated piece of hardware that is used solely for establishing VPNs. And then finally, as we just showed in this last scenario, the remote access scenario, there's something called VPN client software, and you might have used this already. It's, a, it's installed on laptops or remote user desktops, and that software is used to establish the VPN back to the headquarters, which could have a router on the other end or any of those other devices we just listed to establish that VPN. Okay, so different devices can be used to build our VPNs. Okay, so exactly how does a VPN protect our data? Well, the answer comes down to encryption and tunneling. So let's begin with this IP packet. We have our data, and then we have an IP header in front of it. So if you remember from the tutorial on IP, we talked about what's inside the header. And two of the most important fields are the source IP and the destination IP. Well, both of those things together, the IP header and the data, we're going to encrypt the entire thing. So we end up with an encrypted IP packet. So anyone who gets a hold of this packet and they're not supposed to, they're not going to be able to read it or make any sense of it. It's all jumbled, it's garbled, it's a big mess, unless they know how to unencrypt it. Okay, so that's encryption. Now we have to tunnel it. Tunneling simply means that we're sending protocol packets that are encapsulated inside other packets. So we have our entire IP packet which has been encrypted now we're putting on a new VPN header which stores a bunch of information about the VPN and we get into some of those details when we take a closer look at IP security or IPSEC and then after that we put another a new IP header which is then used to send it to the tunnel destination okay so these two things together encrypting our data and then sending sending it over a tunnel enables a VPN uh, with a lot of power and security and that's how our data gets from one side to the other without being tampered with. If you're having some trouble kind of uh, conceptualizing tunnels, think of uh, you sending a letter to somebody and you put that letter inside an envelope and then you put that envelope inside yet another envelope and then you send it across. Well, that process of putting one envelope inside the other envelope, that is what you could think about when you think of tunneling. And we're doing that here with the different headers. Each one of our headers can act as a different envelope. Okay, so that's the encapsulation that we've talked about in other tutorials. Okay, let's just briefly touch upon the different types of VPN technologies you might come across, or at least the history of them. At layer two of the OSI model, we have the layer two forwarding protocol, and this was a Cisco proprietary protocol. It was, it was designed for dial-up, and it created a secure connection, but now it's obsolete, so it's doubtful you'll come across it. However, after that came point-to-point -point tunneling protocol, and this was uh, created by Microsoft. And it pretty much did the same thing as L2, but just had some different features to it.
Finally, we have the Layer 2 tunneling protocol, and this is where Cisco and Microsoft actually came together, and they combined the Layer 2 forwarding with the point-to-point -point tunneling, and they came up with the Layer 2 tunneling protocol. And this kind of replaced uh, the point-to-point -point and the Layer 2 forwarding. Okay, so that's kind of the progression of the VPN technologies you'll find at Layer 2. At Layer 3, we have IPSEC, which stands for IP Security. It is probably the most widely deployed type of VPN technology, and we will cover that in detail in a dedicated tutorial because you will come across this all the time, and you really need to know this one. Finally, at Layer 4, we have SSL, and we'll have a uh, dedicated tutorial on the SSL VPN as well, and this is an interesting technology. You've actually used SSL before if you've ever gone to a secure website. Well, that technology is also used to create a VPN. Okay, so let's summarize what we covered. We now know some of the characteristics of VPNs are confidentiality, so no one can read the data unless they can unencrypt it. Authentication, we can confirm who sent it, and data integrity, we can also confirm that the data hasn't been messed with or tampered with while in transit. There are several instances in which we would want to deploy a VPN. If we want to connect different locations of the same company, that would be an intranet. If we want to connect two different companies, that could be an extranet. Or if we want uh, remote mobile users to connect back to the office, then we would create an access VPN. Now, different devices can be used to uh, create and configure VPN from routers to firewalls and even software that you install on a client PC. And then we got into some of the details of how exactly a VPN protects data. It starts with encryption, where we take our original IP packet and we, we encrypt it. And we'll learn more details about encryption when we take a look at IP security, or IPSEC. And then we take that packet and we put it inside another packet, and then we send it to the destination, and that's considered tunneling. And then finally, we took a brief look at some of the different VPN technologies that you might come across while out in the field. Okay, so that's it. That is the introduction to VPNs. Thanks for watching.